Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to tell about a story which is called, Topsy Turvy Town Quest. Enjoy it! Once upon a time, in a small and peaceful village called Willowbrook, there lived a curious and adventurous girl named Emily. Emily had big, bright blue eyes and a head full of wild, curly brown hair. She loved exploring the woods near her house, playing with her dog Max, and reading about far-off places and magical lands. One sunny afternoon, Emily was sitting under her favorite oak tree, reading a book about dragons and knights, when she noticed something sparkling in the grass. She put her book down and crawled over to see what it was. To her amazement, she found a small, golden envelope. It shimmered in the sunlight, and her name was written on it in fancy, curly letters, Emily. With trembling hands, Emily opened the envelope. Inside, she found a piece of parchment that read, Dear Emily, You are invited to the topsy-turvy town quest. This is a magical adventure full of wonders and surprises. Follow the map on the back of this letter to find your way to topsy-turvy town. We can't wait to see you. Sincerely, the Topsy-Turvy Town Council. Emily's heart raced with excitement. She flipped the letter over and saw a colorful map with winding paths, tall trees, and a big red X marking the spot where Topsy-Turvy Town was located. Without a second thought, she ran back to her house, grabbed her backpack, and packed some snacks, a flashlight, and her favorite book. She called Max, who came running with his tail wagging, ready for an adventure. Come on, Max. Emily said, we're going on a quest. They followed the map through the village, past the fields, and into the dense, magical forest. The trees were tall and twisted, with leaves that sparkled like emeralds. As they walked deeper into the forest, they heard the sounds of chirping birds, rustling leaves, and the distant trickle of a stream. Emily and Max were eager to see what awaited them. After walking for what seemed like hours, they finally reached a clearing. In the middle of the clearing was a large, colorful sign that read, Welcome to Topsy Turvy Town. Emily and Max stepped through the clearing and found themselves in a town unlike any they had ever seen. The houses were all different shapes and sizes, some tall and skinny, others short and wide. Some were even upside down. The streets were paved with bright, shiny cobblestones that seemed to change color as you walked on them. People dressed in all sorts of funny clothes were bustling about, smiling and waving at Emily and Max. Hello there, called a friendly looking woman wearing a polka dotted hat and a dress made of feathers. You must be Emily. We've been expecting you. Hi. Emily replied, feeling a little shy but very excited. This place is amazing. Welcome to Topsy Turvy Town, the woman said. I'm Mrs. Whimsy, and I'll be your guide. There's so much to see and do here. Are you ready for the quest? Emily nodded eagerly. Yes, I'm ready. What do we have to do? Mrs. Whimsy smiled and handed Emily a small, silver key. This is the key to the enchanted chest. To find the chest, you must solve three riddles. Each riddle will lead you to a special place in Topsy-Turvy Town. Are you up for the challenge? Emily took the key and held it tightly. I'm ready. What's the first riddle? Mrs. Whimsy pulled a piece of paper from her pocket and read the first riddle aloud. I have no feet but love to run. I'll help you cool beneath the sun. Find me where the flowers bloom. I'll lead you to your next clue soon. Emily thought for a moment, her brow furrowed in concentration. No feet but loves to run, and it helps you cool beneath the sun. I think it's a stream. That's right. Mrs. Whimsy said, clapping her hands. Now, follow me to the flowering stream. Emily and Max followed Mrs. Whimsy through the winding streets of Topsy-Turvy Town. They passed houses with roofs that spun like tops, 
gardens where flowers sang, and fountains that danced to lively tunes. Emily couldn't believe her eyes, everything was so magical and wonderful. At last, they arrived at a beautiful stream surrounded by colorful, blooming flowers. The water sparkled in the sunlight, and Emily could see little fish darting about. Here we are, Mrs. Whimsy said. Now, where do you think the next clue might be? Emily looked around and spotted a small, wooden box hidden among the flowers. She picked it up and opened it, finding a piece of parchment inside. It read, Bravo, you've solved the riddle one. Now it's time for some more fun. To find your next clue, don't delay. Seek the place where people play. Emily grinned. The place where people play, that must be the playground. Correct again. Mrs. Whimsy exclaimed. Let's head to the topsy-turvy playground. As they walked to the playground, Emily couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder. Topsy-turvy town was filled with surprises at every turn. She couldn't wait to see what the next clue would lead them to. When they arrived at the playground, Emily saw swings that soared high into the sky, slides that twisted and turned like roller coasters, and a merry-go-round that spun backward. Children were laughing and playing everywhere. Emily looked around carefully, searching for the next clue. Then she saw it, a bright red envelope attached to the top of the tallest slide. She climbed up the slide, grabbed the envelope, and slid back down with a giggle. Inside the envelope was the next clue. You've done so well, you're almost there. For your next clue, look where people share. A place of stories, old and new. Find the book that speaks to you. Emily thought for a moment. A place of stories, that must be the library. Indeed, Mrs. Whimsy said. Off to the topsy-turvy library we go. Emily and Max followed Mrs. Whimsy to a tall, whimsical building with books stacked in all directions. The sign outside read, Topsy-Turvy Library, where stories come alive. Inside the library, books floated in midair, and shelves twisted and turned like vines. Emily was amazed. She loved books and couldn't wait to find the next clue. She wandered through the library, looking at all the magical books. Finally, she found one that caught her eye. It was an old, dusty book with a cover that glowed softly. She opened it and found the final clue inside. Congratulations, you're almost done. The final clue will be such fun. Seek the place where wishes come true. The enchanted chest is waiting for you. Emily's eyes widened. The place where wishes come true, that must be the wishing well. Correct again. Mrs. Whimsy said with a smile. Let's go to the wishing well and complete your quest. Emily, Max, and Mrs. Whimsy made their way to the wishing well, which was surrounded by sparkling stones and twinkling lights. It was the most magical place Emily had ever seen. Emily held the silver key tightly in her hand and looked around. Then she saw it, a beautiful chest, covered in intricate carvings and glowing with a soft, golden light. She approached the chest and carefully inserted the key into the lock. With a click, the chest opened, revealing a treasure trove of sparkling gems, gold coins, and a small, glowing orb. Emily picked up the orb, and it glowed even brighter. Mrs. Whimsy smiled and said, this is the heart of Topsy Turvy Town. It's a magical artifact that brings joy and wonder to our town. You have completed the quest and found the greatest treasure of all. Emily felt a warm, happy feeling in her heart. She had done it, she had completed the topsy-turvy town quest. As she looked around at the magical town and all its wonders, she knew that she would always remember this incredible adventure. And so, Emily, Max, and Mrs. Whimsy celebrated their success, surrounded by the magic and joy of Topsy-Turvy Town. It was a day filled with happiness, and Emily knew that this was just the beginning of many more adventures to come. 
After completing the Topsy-Turvy Town quest and uncovering the heart of Topsy-Turvy Town, Emily, Max, and Mrs. Whimsy were invited to a grand celebration in their honor. The entire town came together to celebrate their bravery and success. The celebration took place in the town square, where tables were filled with delicious food and colorful decorations adorned every corner. There were bunting banners made of shimmering fabric and lanterns that glowed in all the colors of the rainbow. Emily couldn't believe her eyes as she looked around at the festive scene. It was like something out of a fairy tale. Wow, this is amazing! Emily exclaimed, her eyes wide with wonder. It's all for you, my dear, Mrs. Whimsy said with a smile. You've brought so much joy to Topsy-Turvy Town, and we wanted to thank you properly. Emily felt a warm, happy feeling in her heart. She couldn't believe that she had made such a difference in the lives of the people of Topsy-Turvy Town. It was the best feeling in the world. As the sun began to set, the townspeople gathered around a large, wooden stage in the center of the square. Emily, Max, and Mrs. Whimsy took their places at the front, ready to enjoy the festivities. The celebration began with music and dancing. A lively band played cheerful tunes, and everyone clapped and danced along. Emily and Max twirled around the square, laughing and smiling as they joined in the fun. Next, there was a feast fit for a king. Tables were piled high with all sorts of delicious treats, roast turkey, pumpkin pie, candy apples, and more. Emily and Max filled their plates and ate until they were stuffed. But the highlight of the celebration was yet to come. As the stars twinkled overhead and the moon rose high in the sky, Mrs. Whimsy stepped onto the stage and raised her arms. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, she said, her voice ringing out across the square. Tonight, we celebrate not only the completion of the Topsy-Turvy Town quest, but also the bravery and kindness of our dear friend Emily. The crowd cheered and applauded, and Emily felt her cheeks flush with happiness. As a token of our gratitude, Mrs. Whimsy continued, we have prepared a special surprise for Emily, a magical fireworks display. At her words, the sky erupted in a burst of color and light. Fireworks of every shape and size filled the air, painting the night sky with brilliant hues of red, blue, green, and gold. Emily gasped in awe as she watched the dazzling display unfold before her eyes. The fireworks seemed to dance and twirl in time with the music, creating a magical spectacle that filled the entire town with wonder. Emily had never seen anything so beautiful in her life. As the last firework faded away, the crowd erupted into cheers and applause. Emily felt tears of joy welling up in her eyes as she looked around at the smiling faces of the townspeople. Thank you, thank you, she said, her voice choked with emotion. This is the best day ever. And indeed it was. As Emily, Max, and Mrs. Whimsy basked in the glow of the fireworks and the warmth of their newfound friendship, they knew that they would cherish this moment forever. For in Topsy-Turvy Town, where magic and wonder abound, every day is a celebration of joy, love, and friendship. As the echoes of the fireworks faded into the night, Emily, Max, and Mrs. Whimsy stood together in the center of the town square, surrounded by the smiling faces of the townspeople. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Emily exclaimed, her heart overflowing with happiness. This has been the most incredible day of my life. Mrs. Whimsy smiled and patted Emily on the back. You deserve it, my dear. You showed bravery, kindness, and determination on your quest, and you brought joy to the hearts of everyone in Topsy-Turvy Town. Emily beamed with pride. She couldn't believe that she had made such a difference in the lives of the people around her. It was a feeling unlike any other. As the celebration continued late into the night, Emily, Max, and Mrs. Whimsy danced and laughed with the townspeople, enjoying every moment of the magical evening. But as the stars began to fade and the first light of dawn peeked over the horizon, Emily knew that it was time to say goodbye 
I'll never forget this day, she said, her voice tinged with sadness. But I know that I have to go back home now. Mrs. Whimsy nodded understandingly. We'll miss you, Emily. But you'll always have a place in topsy-turvy town, and you're welcome back anytime. Emily hugged Mrs. Whimsy tightly, feeling grateful for the friendship and adventure she had found in topsy-turvy town. With a final wave to the townspeople, Emily and Max set off on their journey back home. As they walked through the forest, Emily couldn't stop smiling, thinking about all the incredible memories she had made. When they finally arrived back in Willowbrook, Emily felt a mixture of sadness and excitement. She was sad to leave Topsy-Turvy Town behind, but she knew that she would always carry the magic of her adventure in her heart. As she stepped through the front door of her house, Emily knew that her life would never be the same. She had discovered a world of wonder and adventure beyond her wildest dreams, and she couldn't wait to see what other magical adventures awaited her in the future. And so, as the sun rose high in the sky and the birds sang their joyful songs, Emily smiled and whispered to herself. Goodbye, topsy-turvy town. Thank you for the adventure of a lifetime. And with that, she knew that her journey was only just beginning. I hope you enjoy listening to Topsy Turvy Town Quest. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to tell about a story which is called Jellybean Mountain Adventure. Enjoy it! In the quiet town of Sugarville, where candy trees lined the streets and chocolate rivers flowed gently, lived a curious young girl named Lily. Lily had sparkling blue eyes, curly brown hair, and an adventurous spirit that always led her to exciting places. She lived with her parents and her mischievous little brother, Ben, who was always up for an adventure. One sunny morning, as Lily and Ben played in their backyard, they stumbled upon an old, dusty map hidden under a loose plank in their treehouse. The map was crinkled and faded, but they could still make out a big, colorful mountain labeled Jellybean Mountain. Jellybean Mountain? Ben exclaimed, his eyes widening with excitement. Do you think it's made of real jelly beans? Lily smiled and shrugged. There's only one way to find out. The siblings quickly packed their backpacks with snacks, water, and a few extra jelly beans for good luck. They set off on their bikes, following the map's directions through the candy forest and past the caramel cliffs. As they rode, they met their friends, Max and Emma, who were also looking for an adventure that day. Lily showed them the map, and without hesitation, Max and Emma decided to join them. The more, the merrier. The path took them through Licorice Lane, where the trees were tall and twisted like black licorice sticks. The air was filled with the sweet smell of candy, and the ground was covered in a carpet of marshmallow grass. This place is amazing. Emma said, picking a marshmallow flower and taking a bite. I've never seen anything like it. As they continued, they reached a bridge made entirely of gumdrops. Each step they took made a squishy, satisfying sound. Beneath the bridge, a river of chocolate milk flowed lazily, making everyone thirsty. We should cross the bridge carefully, Max suggested. We don't want to fall into the chocolate milk river. One by one, they carefully crossed the bridge holding on to the candy cane railings. When they reached the other side, they found themselves at the foot of a towering mountain. It was unlike any mountain they had ever seen. Instead of rocks and dirt, the mountain sparkled with every color of the rainbow, made entirely of jelly beans. We found it. Jelly Bean Mountain. Ben shouted, jumping up and down with excitement. The friends stood in awe, staring up at the magnificent mountain. The jelly beans glistened in the sunlight, creating a dazzling display of colors. We should climb to the top and see what's up there, Lily suggested. Who knows what amazing things we might find. With their backpacks secure, they began their ascent. The climb was tricky because the jelly beans were slippery, but they helped each other along the way. 
Max found a sturdy jelly bean cane to use as a walking stick, and Emma discovered that some jelly beans were shaped like steps, making the climb a bit easier. As they climbed higher, they came across various creatures who lived on the mountain. Friendly gummy bears waved at them, and sour worms wriggled playfully around their feet. The friends stopped to chat with a wise old candy owl who gave them some helpful advice. Be careful of the jelly bean giants, the owl warned. They live near the top of the mountain and can be quite grumpy if disturbed. Lily thanked the owl and assured him they would be cautious. The group continued their climb, determined to reach the summit. The higher they went, the more spectacular the view became. They could see the entire town of Sugarville below, and the chocolate rivers glittered like ribbons in the distance. Finally, after a long and tiring climb, they reached a flat plateau near the top of the mountain. They were amazed to find a beautiful garden filled with candy flowers, lollipop trees, and bubbling fountains of fizzy soda. In the center of the garden stood a grand candy castle, its walls made of rock candy, and its towers capped with cotton candy clouds. This is incredible! Ben said, running around the garden in excitement. I feel like we're in a fairy tale. The friends explored the garden, marveling at the beauty and sweetness that surrounded them. They picked candy flowers and sipped from the fizzy soda fountains, enjoying the magical atmosphere. But their adventure was far from over. As they wandered deeper into the garden, they heard a rumbling sound. The ground began to shake, and the friends quickly hid behind a lollipop tree. From behind a rock candy boulder, two enormous figures emerged. They were the jelly bean giants the owl had warned them about. The giants were made entirely of jelly beans, just like the mountain. They had big, friendly faces and wore clothes made of licorice ropes and gummy buttons. Despite their size, they seemed gentle and kind. Who's there? One of the giants called out in a booming voice. Come out, we won't hurt you. Lily, Ben, Max, and Emma cautiously stepped out from behind the tree. The giants smiled down at them. Welcome to Jellybean Mountain, the second giant said. I'm Jolly, and this is my brother, Bean. We're the guardians of this mountain. Jolly and Bean explained that they had lived on the mountain for many years, protecting it and keeping it a secret from those who might not appreciate its magic. They were pleased to meet the children, who had shown such curiosity and bravery. We rarely have visitors, Bean said with a chuckle. It's nice to have some company for a change. The friends spent the afternoon with Jolly and Bean, learning about the history of Jelly Bean Mountain and the magical creatures that lived there. They discovered that the mountain's jelly beans had special powers, granting wishes to those who truly believed in their magic. As the sun began to set, painting the sky with shades of pink and orange, Jolly and Bean offered to help the friends make their way back down the mountain safely. Come back and visit us anytime, Jolly said as they reached the foot of the mountain. You're always welcome here. With hearts full of joy and bags full of jelly beans, Lily, Ben, Max, and Emma waved goodbye to their new giant friends and started their journey home. They couldn't wait to share their incredible adventure with their families and plan their next visit to the magical Jelly Bean Mountain. Back in Sugarville, Lily, Ben, Max, and Emma couldn't stop talking about their adventure on Jelly Bean Mountain. They shared their stories with their families, who were amazed by the magical mountain and the friendly Jelly Bean Giants. The children decided to keep the exact location of Jelly Bean Mountain a secret wanting to protect its magic just as Jolly and Bean did. A few weeks later, as they played in the backyard again, they noticed something strange. A small sprout had emerged from the ground where they had accidentally dropped a jelly bean from their last trip. The sprout glowed with a faint rainbow light, much like the jelly beans on the mountain. Look at this! Ben exclaimed, pointing at the glowing plant. Do you think it could be a jelly bean plant? Lily knelt down to inspect the sprout. It must be. We should take care of it and see what happens. 
The friends agreed and started tending to the little plant, watering it and protecting it from any harm. As the days passed, the sprout grew taller and stronger, eventually blossoming into a beautiful jelly bean tree. Its branches were laden with jelly beans of every color, shining brightly in the sunlight. This is amazing! Emma said, picking a few jelly beans from the tree. We have our own little piece of jelly bean mountain right here. The children enjoyed their new jelly bean tree, but their curiosity soon got the better of them. They wondered if other magical plants could grow from the jelly beans. With a sense of excitement, they planted a few more jelly beans in different parts of the garden. To their delight, each jelly bean sprouted and grew into unique candy plants. One became a lollipop bush, another a licorice vine, and yet another a chocolate mint shrub. Their backyard transformed into a secret candy garden, bursting with colors and sweet scents. As the garden flourished, the friends realized they needed a way to protect it and keep it hidden from anyone who might not appreciate its magic. They decided to build a fence around the garden using peppermint sticks and candy canes. Max, who loved building things, took the lead, and soon the fence was complete. One sunny afternoon, while they were tending to their candy garden, a small creature darted out from behind a chocolate mint shrub. It was a tiny fairy with wings made of spun sugar, shimmering in the sunlight. The fairy looked frightened and lost. Hello there, Lily said softly, crouching down to the fairy's level. Don't be scared. We're your friends. The fairy hesitated for a moment but then fluttered closer. My name is Sparkle, she said in a tiny, musical voice. I got separated from my friends. Can you help me find them? Of course, Sparkle, Ben said. Do you know where they might be? Sparkle explained that she and her fairy friends lived in the candy forest, not far from Jelly Bean Mountain. They had been playing near the licorice lane when a sudden gust of wind scattered them in all directions. We'll help you find them, Max said confidently. Let's start by looking in the candy forest. With Sparkle guiding them, the friends set off towards the candy forest. The journey was familiar, and they soon found themselves among the towering candy trees and marshmallow grass. They called out for Sparkle's friends, hoping to hear a response. After a while, they heard faint giggles coming from a cluster of cotton candy bushes. Pushing aside the fluffy pink foliage, they found a group of tiny fairies, each one as beautiful and delicate as Sparkle. The fairies were overjoyed to be reunited with their friend and thanked the children for their help. You are always welcome in the candy forest, Sparkle said, her wings shimmering brightly. We owe you a great debt of gratitude. The fairies rewarded the friends with a special gift, a pouch of magical fairy dust. This dust can make anything you imagine come true, Sparkle explained. Use it wisely and for good. With the fairy dust safely tucked away, the children returned to their candy garden. They were thrilled with their new treasure and began thinking of all the wonderful things they could do with it. One day, as they played in the garden, Emma had an idea. What if we used the fairy dust to create a secret entrance to Jelly Bean Mountain? That way, we can visit Jolly and Bean whenever we want. The friends loved the idea and quickly set to work. They sprinkled the fairy dust on a patch of ground near their treehouse and imagined a magical door that would lead them straight to Jelly Bean Mountain. To their amazement, a shimmering door appeared, its surface glittering with rainbow hues. Let's try it out. Ben said eagerly, pushing the door open. On the other side, they found themselves at the base of Jelly Bean Mountain, just as they had imagined. The familiar landscape of colorful jelly beans and candy creatures greeted them warmly. Excitedly, they began their climb, eager to see Jolly and Bean again. When they reached the plateau, they found the jelly bean giants waiting for them. Jolly and Bean were thrilled to see their young friends and welcomed them with open arms. We've missed you. Bean said, his jelly bean eyes twinkling. What brings you back to Jellybean Mountain? 
Lily explained about the candy garden they had created and how they had used the fairy dust to make a secret door. The giants were impressed and delighted by the children's creativity and kindness. You've done a wonderful thing, Jolly said. And we have a surprise for you, too. The giants led the children to a hidden part of the garden they hadn't seen before. There, they found a magnificent candy carousel, its seats made of gumdrops and its poles of twisted licorice. The carousel sparkled with a magical glow, and the friends could hardly believe their eyes. This is for you, Jolly said. A gift from Jellybean Mountain to our dear friends. The children took turns riding the candy carousel, laughing and cheering as it spun them around. It was a day filled with joy and wonder, and they knew they would cherish these memories forever. As the sun began to set, painting the sky with shades of pink and orange once more, the children thanked Jolly and Bean for the incredible gift. They promised to visit again soon and to take good care of their magical candy garden. With hearts full of happiness and a new sense of wonder, Lily, Ben, Max, and Emma stepped through the secret door and returned to their backyard. They looked at each other, their faces glowing with excitement. That was the best adventure yet, Max said, grinning from ear to ear. And there are so many more to come, Lily added, already dreaming of their next visit to Jellybean Mountain. The friends hugged each other, feeling grateful for the magic that had come into their lives. They knew that as long as they believed in the wonder of Jellybean Mountain, their adventures would never truly end. The days in Sugarville were filled with excitement as the children spent their afternoons playing in their secret candy garden and planning their next visit to Jellybean Mountain. The magical door had become their favorite discovery, and they often wondered what other surprises awaited them on the colorful mountain. One bright and sunny morning, Lily, Ben, Max, and Emma gathered at the garden, ready for another adventure. They had brought along the pouch of fairy dust, thinking it might come in handy. Let's visit Jolly and Bean, Lily suggested. We can tell them about our latest discoveries and maybe find out more about Jelly Bean Mountain's secrets. The friends stepped through the magical door, feeling the familiar tingle of excitement as they arrived at the base of the mountain. The jelly beans sparkled brightly, and the sweet scent of candy filled the air. They began their climb, eagerly anticipating the fun that awaited them. When they reached the plateau, they were surprised to find the candy garden bustling with activity. Candy creatures of all kinds, gummy bears, sour worms, licorice birds, and more, were preparing for a grand celebration. Banners made of taffy and streamers of spun sugar decorated the garden, and tables were laden with delicious treats. What's going on? Ben asked, his eyes wide with curiosity. Jolly and Bean approached them with big smiles. We're preparing for the great celebration, Jolly explained. It's a special event we hold once every hundred years to celebrate the magic of Jellybean Mountain and all its wonderful inhabitants. The children were thrilled to be part of such a special occasion. They offered to help with the preparations, and the giants gratefully accepted. Lily and Emma helped decorate the candy castle with shimmering rock candy jewels, while Max and Ben assisted with setting up the candy games and activities. As they worked, they learned more about the great celebration. Jolly and Bean explained that it was a time for all the magical creatures to come together, share stories, and enjoy the beauty of their home. It was also a time to honor the mountain itself and the magic that made it so special. When everything was ready, the garden looked more magical than ever. The candy flowers glowed brightly, the lollipop trees swayed gently in the breeze, and the fizzy soda fountains bubbled with joy. The candy creatures gathered, filling the air with laughter and excitement. The great celebration began with a grand parade. The friends watched in awe as the gummy bears marched proudly, the licorice birds performed dazzling aerial displays, and the sour worms wiggled in a delightful dance. Sparkle and her fairy friends flew overhead, scattering sparkling sugar dust that made everything shimmer. Next came the games and activities. 
There were jelly bean races, candy corn tosses, and a licorice tug of war. Lily, Ben, Max, and Emma joined in the fun, laughing and cheering as they played with their candy friends. They even used a little bit of the fairy dust to create a magical candy maze that everyone enjoyed exploring. As the sun began to set, casting a golden glow over the garden, it was time for the grand feast. The tables were filled with every kind of candy and sweet treat imaginable. Jolly and Bean had prepared special dishes just for the occasion, including a giant jelly bean cake that towered over the crowd. Everyone gathered around, enjoying the delicious food and sharing stories of their adventures. The children told tales of their backyard candy garden, and the candy creatures listened with fascination. Sparkle and her fairy friends shared stories of their own magical escapades in the candy forest. Finally, it was time for the highlight of the evening, the magical light show. Jolly and Bean led everyone to a special clearing in the garden, where a large, sparkling crystal stood at the center. With a touch of their licorice wands, the giants activated the crystal, and a spectacular display of lights and colors filled the sky. The friends watched in awe as the lights danced and twirled, creating beautiful patterns and shapes. It was like watching a fireworks show made entirely of candy. The crowd cheered and clapped, their faces glowing with happiness. As the light show came to an end, Jolly and Bean gathered everyone for a final toast. To Jelly Bean Mountain and all its magic. Jolly declared, raising a glass of fizzy soda. May its wonders continue to bring joy and adventure to all who believe. The crowd echoed the toast, raising their glasses high. Lily, Ben, Max, and Emma felt a deep sense of gratitude and joy. They knew they were part of something truly special, and they promised themselves they would always cherish the magic of Jelly Bean Mountain. As the celebration wound down, the friends said their goodbyes and promised to return soon. Jolly and Bean hugged them warmly, thanking them for their help and friendship. You'll always have a special place here on Jelly Bean Mountain, Bean said. Come back anytime you want to explore or just have fun. With hearts full of happiness and memories, the friends made their way back to the magical door. They stepped through, returning to their backyard as the first stars began to twinkle in the night sky. The children stood together, looking at their secret candy garden and feeling the magic all around them. They knew their adventures were far from over and that there were many more discoveries and celebrations to come. We're so lucky to have found Jelly Bean Mountain, Emma said, smiling at her friends. And to have each other, Max added. Lily nodded, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Let's always believe in the magic and keep our adventures alive. Ben grinned. Agreed. To Jelly Bean Mountain and the best friends ever. They all laughed and hugged each other feeling the warmth of their friendship and the magic of their incredible adventures. And as they looked up at the twinkling stars, they knew that as long as they believed, the wonders of Jelly Bean Mountain would always be a part of their lives. As the years went by, Lily, Ben, Max, and Emma continued to visit Jelly Bean Mountain, discovering new secrets and making more magical memories. Their candy garden flourished, and they often welcomed new friends to share in their adventures. The story of their adventures spread throughout Sugarville, inspiring other children to believe in the magic of their world. And every hundred years, the great celebration brought joy and wonder to all who attended, reminding everyone of the special bond between the children and the magical land of Jelly Bean Mountain. And so, the magic lived on, in the hearts of those who believed and in the sweet, colorful world of Jelly Bean Mountain, where every day was an adventure and every moment was filled with happiness. I hope you enjoy listening to Jelly Bean Mountain Adventure.